our fifth and last finalist for this evening's event will be Jeff Dubra. I'm good. How are Doing you? Doing well? Yeah. A little nervous? Uh, a little bit. You're ready? Oh, I ready, think set, I am. Ready, set, go? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Tell us a little bit about what you will be presenting. Yeah, I'm going to be talking about flavor and how we make a better whiskey. <laughs> I'm looking around wondering if you have any with you. Yeah, I got the, got the flask in the back pocket. Well, I know. guess we'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, right. Jeff Dubrow. All right, so as I said, I'm gonna be talking about the flavor of aged whiskey. Now, often when we eat or drink something, we don't stop and think about what makes bread taste bready or a whiskey taste like, well, whiskey. But what it all comes down to is mixtures of hundreds or even thousands of different molecules interacting with receptors in our nose and our taste buds. So when we wanna understand flavor, we first have to understand the chemistry of the foods themselves. Now, when we look at this, we really can't see anything. It's just a jumble of molecules. First, we have to break it down. We have to separate it. And we do that using a machine called a chromatograph. It takes this jumble of molecules and it separates it, letting us see what's there. We then use a machine that acts like a giant scale for tiny things, called a mass spectrometer, to weigh molecules, giving us an idea of their identity. Now, all that might sound a little bit stuffy, but the applications are pretty neat. Let's take, for example, whole wheat bread. Now, one of the main consumer complaints about whole wheat bread is that it's bitter. People know it's healthy, they just don't want to eat it because it doesn't taste good. So, if we want to help people make healthy food choices, we have to help make better tasting food. Now, one of my colleagues, who's right there, has been working on this, using these tools to separate out the compounds in bread and find which ones are bitter. She then traced back the compounds and found they were formed from the oil in the bread during kneading and baking. But this approach works very well for bitterness in bread or why a coconut smells well coconutty. But if we're trying to look at age in whiskey, we can't just smell age. It's almost more of a concept than a particular flavor. So instead what we do is we use our tools to get a chemical fingerprint of all the compounds that are there in a whiskey. We can then compare the fingerprints between young whiskeys and old whiskeys and see what's different. We can then take those different compounds, isolate them out, and taste them. For the ones which taste good, the ones which we like, we can find out how they're naturally formed so we can go back to distillers and give them advice on how to tweak their processes to make better tasting whiskey. Now that's chemistry you can drink. Thanks, Jeff. You're supposed to have enough to share, you know. Oh, uh, well, you know, I just passed around. Maybe next time. Let's hear from our judges. Sam? Oh, thank you, Jeff. Uh, you had me at whiskey, so I was very excited uh, <laughs> about this. Um, at the beginning, I thought you started speaking a little uh, quickly. It seemed like you had a lot to say. You were excited about it, uh, but you did start to speak a little quickly. Yeah. And I could understand everything you were saying, so it wasn't that it was mumbled or lost or anything. But there was kind of a difference between when you were interacting before and after and when you started actually giving the presentation. So uh, a little more relaxed, I think. Um, and you didn't think... I don't think uh, the, what you actually did presenting the material, I think, was very well done in that you brought it back to what people know and like, um, talking about bread and whiskey, making a connection there. I thought all that was very good. I would have dropped a few things, um, you know, especially with a popular audience. I don't think you need to mention like a mass spectrometer or maybe the instrument names necessarily. Just saying, you know, we separated it or we did something like that. Um, so that's just a matter of pitching it to a different audience. But uh, overall, very well done, I think. Thank you. I thought it was a strong presentation, and, and I actually liked the use of the mass spectrometer. Um, I, I, I liked that. I wanted to know more about it. Um, I loved the specificity in how you use your words and your point of view about them and, and really trying to land certain ideas with the audience. I feel you reaching to do that. Um, and I do be careful though, there are some places, in one place for instance, applications, the applications are pretty neat in that section there. You are kind of beginning to sound a little sing-songy. Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, I guess I could see that. It's like a little, re sounding a little bit too rehearsed and getting into the rhythm of saying something over and over, as opposed to really, they're hearing you for the first time and, and you want to 
inspire them or infect them with this fascinating uh, information that you have for them. So be careful about um, repeating um, that kind of sing-song voice. And your use of the audience with one of your colleagues, I love that. And at the end, take your time. Take your time with that joke. Take your time with that joke. Maybe toast the audience, and then maybe enjoy that drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, I, I agree with that. I think at the end, you kind of rushed yourself to the end, and it was, oh, it would've been nice to just see you enjoy the fact that you got through it. <laughs> um, the whole presentation was very well done. Um, I think that there could have been a bit more connection with the audience, a bit less rehearsed feeling. Um, I think that you came across very well and your use of language was good. I think, again, it's, it depends on the audience you're trying to reach with the words that you use and also the goal that you have in what you're trying to say. And I think with your topic, you have something that's going to interest a lot of people who are into drinking fine spirits. You know, So you have an immediate audience who are going to be interested in what you have to say. So it's titillating them and also trying to grab the people yeah. who might not drink at all. You want to, you know, you have to remember that there are other people out there who they're not drinking at all, and you want to be able to say, okay, why is this important, and what are the really interesting aspects? So I think, I think there's a, a bit of work to be done there, but overall, okay. great. Thank you. I'd just like to add something. I think I want to, I want for you to know that rehearsal is good, but this is an audience that you have not uh, seen yet. And this is the first time they're hearing these words, so you've done the rehearsal and trust that and let it go. Let it go and try and reach them. You've received some great feedback here. What do you think of some of the comments? Yeah, I'd agree. I mean, I guess the one, one point of contention I'd have is in terms of adding in like the bit about the mass spec, I feel like that's such an integral part of the work that I do that it would be almost a shame to leave it out. Yeah, and it wasn't, it wasn't so much that um, I thought you should leave it out necessarily every time. Just, you know, depending on the audience, it's something you might want to be careful about, just something to consider. So I wouldn't yeah. necessarily say leave it out, but just something to consider. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you, Jeff, and toast up to you as well. <laughs> Wonderful.